My guest today is Dave Rail. Dave, how you doing? I'm doing awesome, Dave. It's good to see you. And I don't know what's been like four years here in Kansas City. I think is the last time I saw. It's you. been ages for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty awesome to get back into the flow, seeing people face to face. It's good to see people in general and you in particular. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do for a living these days, Dave? So I uh, took a job with a, a business that's uh, kind of uh, coming out of being a startup and kind of moving into being a going concern. Uh, oh. It's called Infinicept in uh, Denver. We're uh, in the uh, the fintech uh, payments space, so it's it's a lot of fun, and you know, getting to move with uh, fast moving technology and uh, Azure Cloud and and all of that fun, right? So you know, doing oh, cool. doing some both uh, .NET framework that we're trying to get rid of, and some uh, some .NET five, and uh, you know, it'll be .NET six pretty soon. Very so, soon, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Uh, well, congratulations to the, your startup uh, turned uh, going concern, and to you as well. Definitely, yeah. Um, you're uh, and you gave a talk at here at KCDC. Uh, a couple days ago, right? Yeah, yeah. I did one yesterday, kind of a fill-in with uh, some of the uh, troubles with getting some of the speakers here and some of that stuff. So oh, yeah, I, I picked up Europe, a, people in Europe coming over. Definitely, was. yeah. I picked up a second talk, but yeah, my my main uh, thing for getting here was to do a uh, Git workshop. So yeah, Git, was, I don't think I've ever done a show on Git. I have to go back and look, but it, it's weird because that's such a ubiquitous part of almost everything I do. It touches everything for sure, right? I mean, it's you know, I mean, there was a time when it wasn't necessarily Git. You might have been using, you know, Team Foundation version control or Subversion or Mercurial even, but uh, yeah. you know, it's Sor visual source safe. Visual source safe. Yeah, don't <laughs> remind me. Uh, people laugh about that, but it was, uh, it was better than nothing. It did the job. It did. Yeah, you had to deal with uh, corruption problems and exclusive locks and yeah. uh, you know file shares, and it was, uh, it, it was, it, it had its warts, it had, but it, it, it definitely was. Uh, it, it, yeah, it, it was useful in its time. But so. you said, yeah, it's, it's funny that TFS kind of evolved to Azure DevOps, and Azure DevOps now supports Git as uh, uh, for for its um, check-ins, checkouts, and so on. Well, let's let's start with what is Git. What is Git? So that, I think that's an interesting question, and kind of one of the uh, the the things, one of the approach uh, things that I took in the uh, in the workshop was let, let's get into for for one thing, why is Git right, and what what problem is it trying to solve? Yes. And uh, and and why is it the way that it is? And there's there's a great blog post. I, I could probably give you a link for this one. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom Preston Werner, he was uh, kind of the the genesis of GitHub, right? Uh, he wrote this blog post called the Git Parable, and he tells this story about uh, you're working on some software project and you want to keep a version history of this thing mm -hmm. and so you save off all your files in a directory and then you have this series of snapshots of of your code as you go along and I, then I have definitely done that yeah and so you know he, he writes the story of being inspired by you know a photographer at the mall who's taking pictures of a family to be able to get back to points in time and seeing what your kids looked like and oh. all of that stuff and so I, it's a really neat story and it's one of those things that I kind of recommend to everybody out there that uh, y you ought to read this post if you use git it's not going to tell you how to use Git, but it really gets you kind of uh, intimate into uh, just why Git is the way that it is. And so, mm. you know, with, with that being part of the approach of, of, you know, understanding why Git is, then you can start to think about, well, what is Git? And so, you know, and one of the, one of the punchlines of Git, right, well, I mean, the, the obvious answer is it's a distributed version control system, right? And mm -hmm. I think everybody could tell you it's that, uh, but it's also a, a, a content addressable file system. And okay. if, you, if you ever read the Git book, you'll see this content addressable file system. And well, what does that mean, of course, right? What does but, that mean? Well, so, you know, Git, uh, you know, I, th I think anybody that's used Git is familiar with, we, you know, we see these SHA hashes that, that are referenced to, to our commits. And ultimately, Git is storing objects in a, you know, the, there you see that dot Git uh, hidden directory, that's yeah. that subdirectory, right, that is the Git repository. And then everything outside of that is your working directory around that, around that repository. And then deep down there into inside of that .git directory, Git's storing a bunch of objects. Mm -hmm. And there are different types of objects, including commits, but there are also trees and blobs inside of there, and, and there's another type too. But, but you know, it's storing really the, the entire contents of your file system at a given point as an object tree inside of that .git directory. And those SHAs are, uh, you know, they're, they're hashes of the content of, of that snapshot. And so it's content addressable, right, that, that you can re retrieve any of these snapshots by by using that uh, that SHA as the as the address to get those things 
And that's you know not terribly important as far as using Git. You don't really need to know any of that. But when you start to look a little bit at what some of those objects are and some of those things, then you start to understand a little bit about what Git's trying to do. And uh, thinking about a series of commits and uh, objects that reference other objects, and you start to see the picture of this linked list of commits that, right. that you have in Git. And uh, it starts to become a little easier to use Git when you, when you get a little bit more familiar with this nature of it being a distributed version control system built on top of a content addressable file system. Oh, interesting. So, so now how do we interact with Git? Uh, as, a, as a software developer? Well, I, I think, you know, everybody that, uh, well, not everybody, but generally, right, general use is you're going to clone some repository from somewhere, okay. and then you're interacting with with that code, right? You're, you're uh, checking out different uh, versions of, of the code and those kinds of things. And well, I want to throw out a few words here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Define clone, cloning a repository. Clone, all right. So, yeah, with Git being a distributed version control system, that means that... Uh, uh, in contrast to the likes of Team Foundation version control and subversion, you've got the entire repository on your machine. And so everybody has a copy of the repository instead of having a working directory that references a remote repository. Okay. And that's that's a, uh, a shift in the way that we think about version control because see, you've got your entire history right there with you. And th that's in large part what enables Git to be so lightning fast, right? It, mm -hmm. it performs like a maniac, you know, as, as we've all seen, as you know, interacting with Git. And, and so it is so fast uh, because of a lot of reasons. For one, that it's storing snapshots instead of deltas in, in its file system. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also that it is, um, you know, that it is everything's local, except for when you're interacting with remotes, which, you know, that's yet another vocabulary term that, you know, we keep throwing into to this thing. But, but yeah, you know, a clone is really just getting a copy of an entire repository from a re remote location. And so now you've got the full history of all of your source code right there on your machine. Yeah, and you said the word checkout. What check is out that? What is too. That? What's a yeah. check out? You know, I, I've, I've got a friend, uh, Sean Rakowski. He, he, uh, he, he did a podcast for a while too, and, and he's, he's a really smart guy in Minnesota. He, 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 he articulated Git checkout in a way that I think just totally makes it totally clear is that he said it's, it's really an admonition to, hey, check this out, right? Hey, go <laughs> look at this. And so when you tell Git that I want to check out a particular ref, you're telling Git, hey, I want you to materialize this thing on my disk so that I can check it out, right? So I can go mm. scope this thing with with my eyes. Ah, okay. All so, right. And yeah. then the, the remote is what? Remote is just a reference to another repository. Okay. So that, uh, you know, when I make changes in my repository, I can synchronize with a repository somewhere else. Okay. And, you know, it's kind of funny. I, you know, we, we've got this distributed system, this distributed version control called Git. And we usually use it with a centralized repository, right? right. Which is kind of funny, right? You know, somewhere out in Azure DevOps or, 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 GitHub. or GitHub or GitLab or, you know, any of these different places where, where we store, you know, our, our source control, right? We, we deal generally with a canonical repository. And Git's built so that you don't have to do that right so mm -hmm. but uh, yeah you can have uh, one or more zero or more really you can you can have remotes associated with your repository uh, you might have zero if you're just l developing just, locally yeah. and you know you only care about it on your disk and if your disk fails well then you've right, lost true, that repository yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah a, a remote is a way that you can get you know that entire history of, of your repository out into another place and you can bring in changes from that other place and including those changes that all of your team have created and pushed into that central repository yeah. Uh, well, now talk about uh, the the interaction as a developer. What's how does that work? Let's tell me about the workflow. Sure, sure. I mean, we, we could we could talk all day about this yeah. stuff well, if we really I, wanted I, I, to. We could so, talk yeah. all day, but I'll tell you what. When I use Git, there's I don't know maybe ten commands that I use a lot, and yeah. maybe not even that many. And then there are another hundred commands that either I don't use or I use. Uh, once a month, yeah, and I have to look those up. Yeah, there's definitely an iceberg phenomenon that you, right. you've, you've got this tip of what you can see of the whole thing that's above water. And so, yeah, in, interacting with Git, yeah, you, you have to know enough to do the things that you do in your daily life. And that's really what most developers do, especially yeah, especially in the .NET world where, you know, Git is, uh, you know, it, it's a bit of a foreign concept, right? You know, the, this this Linuxy thing that, that we've brought <laughs> into our world, uh, which, I mean, that's the way the world is going, right? 
right? You know, with you know, since .NET Core being cross-platform and and Docker and Kubernetes and all of these things, yeah. you know, everything's moving toward Linux in the .NET world, which I think is exciting and wonderful and brilliant. And you know, we could have a whole other conversation about <laughs> Linux too. But you know, uh, Git being born in Linux and you know, Linux kernel development and all of that. So you know, it, it is um, you know, it, it, it's different for for .NET folks than than you know, well, at least the the old .NET folks like us who've who've been yeah. around and have, have have seen some other things. Yeah, I think yeah. that Microsoft's done a better job of uh, learning from other communities, yes. and other technologies than they did say ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're really in danger of going off at some tangents here, but right. I mean the the .NET CLI is a thing of beauty, right? You know, being able to interact with .NET from the command line the way right. we are now. I mean, it's you know, uh, Ruby uh, had had a wonderful command line experience, and I think you know .NET saw that, and then Node, uh, you know, doing the same thing right. and and integrating the lessons of all of those tools into something that we can just, you know, we can use beautifully and not be confined to Visual Studio. Not not that, you know, there aren't good reasons to use Visual Studio, but you don't have to anymore as a .NET developer, and that's that's a beautiful thing. All right. Let's talk, talk a little about the, um, just, just not all the, the tangential uh, parts of Git, but the common things that I would do using Git. Sure, sure, yeah. So, uh, you know, generally, you know, most teams that I've worked with, and, you know, of course, Git is a, um, a, a versatile tool that you can use in a lot of different ways. It's a Swiss Army. But yeah, you know, <laughs> you, so, you know, the team has some central repository. You clone that thing to your machine, so you've got a copy of that thing. Okay. And, you know, you've probably got some canonical branch, right? You know, some teams have more, more uh, long-lived branches than others, mm -hmm. right? I'm I'm really fond of having one canonical main line of development and you're just working against that potentially with feature branches potentially even just going straight against that branch but you know I, I'm going a little too far there but uh, you know that, that you you might be uh, creating your branch from that main branch that you're supposed to be uh, creating your branches from you uh, work against a branch and then that's a whole other part of git as well what is a branch right but you, you create uh, new snapshots against your branch new commits right so right. you so, know so I've written a bunch of code I've cloned the repository I've created the branch, I've written a bunch of codes, I've implemented this cool new feature, and now I want to share it with my team. Yes. What do I do? Yeah. Well, having created those new commits, those new snapshots, uh, you know, against your repository, right, and uh, being pointed to by your branch, and I'll tell you the punchline of what, what I always tell people when I when I when I talk a Git with them is that a branch in Git is a pointer to a commit. It's nothing more, nothing less, okay. and that's that's a bit of a mind blowing insight, and it's mm -hmm. the thing that to me when when I heard that, and I'm I'm, I'm sorry, I'm I'm diverging from your question, but but I think that that's right. important to say Let's is, come back to it. but yeah, so you know, you've you've created your branch, you've created your commits now you can push your uh, your branch right? okay. and including all of those objects that are pointed to by your branch and if you think about git as a uh, you know as a content addressable file system right you've created these objects that live in your repository so you've got your latest commit that references a tree that has all of your objects it also references the commit that came before it and the commit that came before it and so when you push your changes to that central repository you're syncing with that server and sending all of those objects and that reference to those objects that is called your branch. And so all of that stuff goes up to your server and now your teammates can see it. And you know, when, uh, when we're using some of these great web tools that have grown up around Git, uh, you know, like GitHub, right now we are uh, you know, creating pull requests or GitLab calls them merge requests. So that it's the same concept, right? To, to try to get your, your, the code from your branch back onto the main line. And then you can be interacting with Git uh, via, via the browser right? in some different ways and having some conversations and code review and all of that, which is not really necessarily a you know Git a directly Git related thing, right. right? You know that's that's some of these Git providers providing that functionality on top of it. You know, going back to Tom Preston Werner, right? And he, he, there's there's some stories too about him, uh, you know, using Ruby on Rails to develop this user interface in the browser for Git that became GitHub. And uh, you know that that's uh, that's a pretty cool story to to think about as well. But yeah, that's a uh, you know so so there's your flow, right? You you've got your changes, you've pushed them to the server, right? Mm -hmm. That yeah another vocabulary word push right the taking taking what I've done locally and uh, sending it up to the to the uh, the remote repository which you know generally is going to be one of these uh, source code providers but it could even be another directory on my machine right or, uh, I, 
yeah, a remote is just another repository somewhere. So, I see. Yeah. All right, now, one of the challenges I've had in this scenario where we're working with other people on the same team, the same code base, is that maybe I've made a change to code and you've made a change to the same code, the same file. Indeed. What, uh, what happens then? Does, does one of us win or what? <laughs> well, a few things could happen. And, you know, I mean, th this is why that things like exclusive locking in, in, t in Visual Source Safe existed was to, yeah, to, to, was prevent, to prevent that, ever that happening. happening. So, yeah. And, you know, Git embraces, well, that can happen. And, uh, you know, and we need to be able to deal with that. And so, you know, it's, uh, it does depend, right? If, if you are changing one function at the top of the file and I'm changing another function at the bottom of the file, then Git will say, all right, I know what to do, right? I, I can I can take you know I can take Dave's changes here and I can take Dave's changes here and and all good, right? Mm -hmm. But if we've changed something that Dave one and Dave two, <laughs> Dave, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If if we've changed the same line or even you know lines that are that are close to each other, then Git might say, well, hey, you know what? Uh, human intelligence is necessary to figure out how to resolve this merge yeah. conflict, and so that uh, you know that uh, is a term that strikes fear into the uh, hearts of developers, right? A lot of fear and dread, uh, you know, goes into that. But, um, you know, Git does tell us what we need to decide and helps us with that. And okay. it, c it can be confusing. And, and you know, there, there is definitely some learning associated with how to successfully resolve merge conflicts. And I've seen developers uh, do it uh, in, in ways that didn't work many, many, many oh, times, I've, Incl I've yeah, including failed. myself. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but yeah. The, the idea is that it, Git was is smart enough to do a lot of this stuff these merges automatically and when it cannot it's also smart enough to ask you yes i don't know this how do you want to handle it exactly and then and then you you decide and then do the purge yeah that's do I, right do i keep dave one's changes or do i keep dave two's changes and, yeah or and maybe or both of them one after the other yeah or, yeah or maybe half of yours half of mine i mean this cool. is uh it's it's a different every single time right yeah now. definitely um here, I'll tell you one. I'll just I'll throw this question out because I know it confused me originally. There were Git and GitHub are not the same thing. Uh. And I know you know that this is true, but des describe just the difference between the two. Sure, I, I think I did say a little bit about that already, right? Okay. That uh, you know, GitHub was kind of a web user interface yeah. to Git. Uh, it was, I think, is is the, kind of the genesis of of what these providers, right? You know, and, and there are several in the field, right? You know, not only GitHub, GitHub being you know Microsoft now. Uh, Azure DevOps has you know s very similar functionality of yeah. of providing Git uh, with a web user interface and uh, you know being able to talk to Git via Git itself, right? Either over HTTPS or SSH, uh, you know, the different capabilities of, of communicating there, or, you know, over the browser to, uh, to you know, see uh, logs of history, to create commits even, right? You know, the GitHub has, you know, I can click the button and edit a file in the browser and yeah. create a commit right there from the browser, yeah. uh, you know, using Git on the server, uh, ultimately behind the scenes. But yeah, it's a, it's a user interface on top of that. Really the, uh, the, the big innovation in GitHub uh, and, and, and those uh, other tools like GitHub is uh, being able to have those conversations around code changes with the thing that GitHub calls a pull request. Got it. So, yeah. All right. Well, I know there's a lot more to Git that we could dive into, but I think it's a good starting point for Certainly. people. But if, if people are new to Git and they want to learn more, where, where would you send them? Well, I would say the first thing is read that blog post by Tom Preston Werner, the okay. Git parable. That's a great place to start. It's not going to tell you how to use Git, but it really helps in understanding Git. And then uh, if you if you really want to go deep, you know, one of two things, get in contact with me and we can talk about it. Well, how do we uh, do that? <laughs> well, uh, my, my email address uh, is it, or, well, LinkedIn is probably a good place. You can find okay. me, Dave Rail, on LinkedIn. That's okay. that's probably a good place to, to get in contact that's with great. me. So, uh, the, yeah. they'll come, you'll probably have a, an email come pouring in sure Same, yeah from one of my tens of users viewers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah there, there's that and then um you know it, there there's a, a git book right the uh, uh, uh pro git is the is the name of the book it's okay. colloquially known as the git book okay. uh sean chacon and I, I forget the other co-author uh but that that's um you know, if you want to go deep it's it's a bit of a dry read uh it, but it, it it will tell you everything you want to know about git essentially excellent so. Yeah. Dave, thank you so much. All right. Yeah. Thank you too, Dave. I'm thrilled to be here in Kansas City, reconnecting with friends again and getting to have all kinds of wonderful conversations about what it's like to be a technologist and to be in technology. So this has been a great experience at the Kansas City Developer Conference.